Hey everybody, it's Adrian, and in this video we're going to take a look at switching from a 0.4 millimeter to a 0.5 millimeter nozzle. First we're going to cut over to some video that I took of actually swapping out the nozzle itself, and then we'll come back and we'll take a look at these prints and see what the differences are between uh, the prints with the two nozzles. Okay, so here we are. I've got the new nozzle here, and I always put a little bit of um, high temp anti-seize on it. This is the same kind of used for automotive exhaust parts so it can handle the heat no problem. And if you notice I actually use an E3D V6 nozzle instead of the, the typical nozzle and it fits fine. The difference is that it's a little bit shorter and so all I had to do was move my my um, switch, end stop switch up a little bit just so I could still get my bed level and the reason I went with the E3D V6 nozzle is that the hardened steel nozzles are a lot easier to find and it was also quite a bit cheaper. Uh, this one I got the 0.4 millimeter that's on there now I got from Matter Hackers and then this 0.5 millimeter I actually got very inexpensively from a Chinese company and we're just going to try it out and see how it works. So the printer's already up to temperature at 220 degrees so I'm going to go ahead and just start taking off the ducting here. And I know my wires are kind of a mess. I uh, meant to do a little bit more wire management and just never got around to it. And now I'll go ahead and unplug this fan. So then all I'm using is a pair of locking pliers and I put some blue tape around them. Really it's just to protect the insulation on the hot end because this has some metal jaws on it and um, so that's why I put that on there. And then I'm actually using this wrench from a remote control truck. This is meant to take the, uh, the, wheels, the bolts off the wheel lugs and uh, it fits the axle, fits the axle, <laughs> it fits the nozzle just perfect. So all you're going to do is just very carefully, because you don't want to, to put too much pressure on here. So we get in there and clamp that down just enough to hold it. And then the nozzle should just start to spin right off. So there we go. There's the old one. And it's very hot right now. And now we'll go ahead and put the new one in. And you do want to either wear some gloves or work a little bit quickly just because this tool will start to heat up pretty quick. So I am going to go ahead and grab this one more time. There we go. And you want to put it on there pretty tight. And you can see it's actually starting to smoke now a little bit. I think that was from the, from the tape on there a little bit. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and get this plug back in. so that we can start cooling this hot end back off. Okay. And the only other thing really to note if you're using an E3C E3D V6 nozzle is that the ducting that you use might not quite fit. I had to do a little relief cut here, not all the way through it, but just a little relief cut so that I could get this up high enough to get it uh, around the heat block. Thank you. 
Okay, and then I'm just going to push a little bit of filament through just to see. And there we go. And it looks fine. Okay, so here we have the two prints. The main things that I really wanted to kind of test out. Uh, well, first, there's a couple reasons that you might want to move to a larger nozzle on your printer. And it could be uh, stronger vase mode prints because you're able to do thicker uh, line widths a little bit easier. Or you might want to be able to print a little faster because you can do larger layer heights or less walls. The big thing for me was just a little added insurance against uh, clogs and partial clogs when I was printing wood filaments and filaments with a lot of glitter and things like that. Uh, I wasn't really having a lot of trouble with clogs printing those types of filaments. I would have just the occasional partial clog and so I just wanted a little bit more insurance just to ensure that I didn't. Since switching I've probably printed at least a thousand hours on this 0.5 millimeter nozzle and I've had no partial clogs, no nothing. It's, it's printed flawlessly. So it's really working out well for me. So what I want to take a look at for everyone else is see going from a 0.4 to a 0.5 millimeter nozzle, do you lose much as far as detail and resolution? How much time do you gain in, in printing speed and different things like that? And it might not seem like one from 0.4 to 0.5 as much, but you have to remember that's a 25% increase in nozzle diameter and a 58% increase in area of the uh, hole in the nozzle. So it's it's decent, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, the first good news I can report is that as far as the profile settings, going from 0.4 to 0.5 was very, very minimal. All I did was I went into Cura in the machine settings, changed it to a 0.5 millimeter, went into my CR10 profile, changed my line width from 0.4 to 0.5, and literally everything else was the same. So that's the good news. It was a really easy switch. If you're jumping up to like a 0.8 or a 1 millimeter nozzle, you may have to do more changes than that. I don't know. But 0.4 to 0.5 was really simple. So let's take a look at the prints first. Uh, all four on the CR10. We'll take a look at the Einstein bust first. So on this guy here, this is with this is an Einstein bust by LS Miniatures, and it was printed in Matter, Hack, Matter Hackers Build Series Tan PLA. And what I was trying to show with this one was really just if you lose any detail with the larger nozzle, because this one is a really detailed model, all the wrinkles in his skin and, and all of his hair and everything. And so this was, let's see, 0.18 layer height. The, I have to look and see which is which, the 0.4 millimeter here was three walls, 8% infill, used 68 grams of PLA and took 9 hours and 20 minutes. The 0.5 millimeter, I used the exact same settings except I went to two walls instead of three. So this was 66 grams and it dropped it down to 7 hours and 43 minutes. So there was a pretty good reduction just from going to three walls to two walls and the reason I was able to go down to two with this one is that three walls on a 0.4 millimeter nozzle is 1.2 millimeters thick and then two walls with a 0.5 is one millimeter thick and I had done some testing already and I knew that even at one millimeter thick it was hiding the infill. I couldn't see the infill coming through the walls so I knew that two was okay with this whereas with the 0.4 I had to do three. And so that's really where the time saving was on this one. And so if you look at them side by side they're just almost identical. It's very very hard to see any differences. I can tell you that looking at them up really close. The 0.4 does maintain a little bit more detail, but it's incredibly subtle. I think that most people are never going to notice a difference unless they're really, really looking at it. The wrinkles in the skin, you know, on his forehead, his mustache, his his hair, I mean just everything. The 0.5 still gave really good detail. So I mean it turned out really good. Um, so I think from that perspective as far as detail, I mean, you know, the wrinkles and things, I don't think you're really going to get a lot more intricate detail than something like this. So I think you're fine from the, from the resolution perspective. I was really happy with, with that change there. So now we're going to take a look at the low poly Toto dial uh, by Flowalistic. And this one is in Ziltec Tarot PLA at 200% scale. The 0.4 millimeter version was 0.2 layer height, two walls, 8% infill, used 39 grams and took 3 hours 30 minutes. 
What I wanted to show with this one was that you can go to a thicker layer height with the 0.5 millimeter nozzle and save time on your prints that way. And on a print like this, where it's not a high resolution print, you, you're really not going to lose much of anything by going to that higher layer height. So the 0.5 millimeter one, I went up to a 0.25 layer height. So what I wanted to do was half of the diameter of the nozzle on both of them. So going to a 0.25 layer height, no other changes, used 43 grams and dropped the print time to two hours and 33 minutes. So it's an hour and 57 minutes. I'm sorry, it's 57. That would have been nice. Hour and 57 would have been good. It was 57 minutes faster on this model. And these are not, even though they're 200% scale, these are not large models. So that time savings is really good. If you were doing something a lot larger, like a like something like this, and you were able to go up the layer height, it would save you a ton of time on it. So as far as time savings, I think it'd be really good. And you can see from the quality, same thing as the Einstein bust, it's almost identical. There's very, very little difference that you can see in it. Um, on the nose, there's a little bit, you can see a little bit of the stair stepping from the larger layer height. But on a model like this, I don't think that's a problem. And if you look at the hands and like the hip area, it's, you really can't tell a difference. The layer lines look almost identical. So same thing from this perspective, I, I'm really happy with the 0.5 millimeter nozzle again. The, the Chinese knockoff E3D V6 nozzle has performed fine. Um, it does seem on large flat prints, it does seem like it doesn't print quite as smooth. I'm wondering if maybe the tip of the nozzle is not cut perfectly flush because it does almost have just a little bit of a wave to it, but that's really the only thing I've run into with it. And I mean, it was it was $4 shipped. So, I mean, it was incredibly cheap. I figured since I was trying out a 0.5, didn't know if I'd like it, I would go ahead and get something really inexpensive just to try it out and see. And so far, I've been happy. Like I said, I have over a thousand hours on that on that nozzle now. I haven't run into any issues. Um, don't plan to change it out except maybe going to the new um, nozzle X because I've been printing some PET G and it does like to really stick to those hardened steel nozzles so it'd be nice to have something that has a coating on it to keep the, the PET G from sticking but that would be my only reason to change from this nozzle. Alright so that's it hopefully you guys enjoyed this video I enjoyed doing the testing and making the video and uh, sharing my results with all of you uh, if you enjoyed the video please hit the like button don't forget to subscribe and happy printing.